Hello, dear friends, how is it going? I'm Ari Ferriger, and today I'm here to tell you that the Viking religious symbols are wrong. Very sad day for hiddenry. Well then, uh, let me be more specific before anyone loses their, sh sh their composure. Um, the other day, I've made a video in which I have presented a particular ridiculous meme concerning the god Odin. Uh, that doesn't matter for now. However, coincidentally, after that particular video came out, I have started to see all over the internet this new other meme, which I shall present right here on the screen. Uh, it was popping out on several platforms and uh, not just in one or two groups, but on several groups half a hundred posts all over several platforms. Completely mental. As you can see, it is supposedly concerning Viking symbols. The little beast was spreading fast and this got me worried. I would understand the amount of misconceptions here if it were, say, 20 years ago. Not everybody had access to the internet. Well, I remember I was one of those trying to take my first steps into paganism back when I was 14, 15 and there was barely any book, and I had no internet, I didn't even have a computer, and even if I had, well, Google was uh, quite new, there was no YouTube, and several other platforms did not exist, especially important platforms we have nowadays that give us direct access to proper research work. So basically back then it was just a bunch of occultists saying whatever they wanted about existing symbols and a lot of new made-up symbols and getting away with it because uh, there was barely any form of confirming anything. Nowadays, however, when it comes to pre-Christian, let's say, Eurasian belief systems and religiosities, well, Northern Europe is by far certainly the most researched about, and especially, especially uh, Old Norse context, there are several scholarly works, not to mention that almost 98% of all the knowledge that was ever written and, of course, survived, we have access to it through the internet. So, it got me genuinely worried that such misconceptions are still quite active and uh, it's not just the person that has created the meme and the, the, the few other persons that share it, but <laughs> the thousands of people that give likes and, and comment on these things and don't say a word about it, about the misconceptions in it. Uh, but not everything in this meme is wrong, mind you. It's just the usual and weird lingering misconceptions. So let's start by quickly analyzing <laughs> the content of the image. So let's see, um, the image uh, contains nine supposed Viking symbols. Viking! Here lies our first problem with the title itself. Viking. Uh, well, Viking is a circumstantial concept. It cannot be used ethnically and the symbols themselves are not really Viking either, if we take into account that the so-called Viking Age was little less than 300 years in the whole history or in the whole of Scandinavian history, and refers to the end of the Scandinavian Iron Age and the beginning of the Scandinavian Middle Ages, with the Viking Age being the culmination of the Scandinavian Iron Age, and many symbols are iconographies that came from other moments in history and even from other cultures and peoples, other contexts, and there is a clear evolution of the symbols. For this context, it would be best, I think, to call these Old Norse symbols, at the very least, taking into account the archaeological evidences in which these symbols are found, which, uh, which is within the, the Old Norse society, that is. Uh, since being Viking was an occupation and not ethnicity, so the great majority of Scandinavians at this time and the, in these contexts, and the ones that have carved and or have made these symbols into a particular surface and material, were not Vikings per se, did not have that, that activity or that occupation, but were in fact people within the Old Norse society with a variety of occupations, uh, works, jobs and, and, and social status. So let's start with the first one, which is right, by the way, and it is surprising because it really is a well-represented symbol of the Old Norse society and is rarely used nowadays when dealing with iconography and symbology of these periods and cultures. So we have somewhere on the screen Yggdrasil, possibly, 
And this specific iconography really appears on the Heverhugdal tapestries. And we can see here a detail of one of these same tapestries that shows the symbol in question. Uh, there is no concrete evidence of what it actually is. However, it does seem to be the great tree Yggdrasil, the world tree, the, the, the tree of life, a fundamental pillar in animist cosmology, in Norse mythology. Although uh, there are several theories for this symbology, for me and for a few others, uh, it really seems to be the symbolic representation of Yggdrasil, which sadly, uh, not a lot of people mention this actually, but uh, it is because, uh, it is especially because, well, taking into account the animals that are represented in it, which seem to be two cockerels, one on, one on each end of the tree, therefore representing such animals that in Norse mythology are indicated as existing in certain holes of the other world, of the afterlife, both in celestial afterlife places and in the underworld as well, being an animal representative of death and rebirth in several Western European cultures, including here in Portugal, uh, and quite strong in Portuguese folklore as well, as you can see. <laughs> Then uh, we have, of course, the web of Wyrd um, and Jungnir, which are not authentic symbols of the Viking Age. I've already made a video about the web of Wyrd, uh, so I don't think it will be necessary to talk about it again. So if you have the time and want to, of course, watch the video I've mentioned here, if you would be so kind, following the information icon in the uh, right upper corner of, uh, or, or in the description of this video. So, in short, the Web of Word and Gunnir are modern symbols of the 1990s. I am older than these symbols. The supposed Jungnir symbol itself, also created in the second half of the 20th century, was based on shapes intertwined with knot symbolisms that has the poss possibility of being related to the cult of Odin, if we take into account symbologies such as the quatrefoil, uh, which um, some were quite used in the Scandinavian Iron Age, but also throughout medieval periods and um, other times and other contexts in European history. And I think that trying to find a connection with the cult of Odin is not the most appropriate approach as these symbols appear in uh, various uh, representations of different things and not exactly something that direct us directly to a cult linked to Odin and uh, certainly here the bind rune in question called Jungnir uh, has absolutely nothing to do with Odin's Jungnir spear since there is also no iconographic visual representation for such an object, a mythical object. Then uh, we have, I think, the Aegisjalmur next, uh, the next symbol, and uh, at the end of all of this mess, the Vekvisir. Uh, and I've already made several videos about these symbols and the Galdrastafir, Icelandic magic staves. Therefore, the presented pattern of the Aegisjalmur uh, corresponds to that one created in the Icelandic Renaissance, totally unrelated to the protoform found in Hedby of the 8th century, uh, and which has absolutely no relation to the medieval and Icelandic literary sources on the sad symbol. Uh, more recently, if you remember, I've made a video about this and, and, and the case of Hedby precisely. I leave it here for you to see. Uh, and that video eventually goes back to my previous videos about the Aigisjalmur and the Vegvisir and the Gadrastafir. Um, the Aigisjalmur um, in its current form, as seen here, first appears in a 17th century Icelandic manuscript. The Vegvisir, in turn, is a creation of the 19th century. To be more precise, it is dated to the year 1860 on the official website of Icelandic manuscripts, uh, the manuscript on paper kept in the National Library of Iceland, also known as Huld. More information about these Icelandic magic symbols. Um, there are other videos I've made where I go much deeper into these issues and these videos all contain bibliography for you to explore. Therefore, we can say that these two symbols are part of 
post-medieval Judeo-Christian mysticism in Iceland. The ravens, uh, Hugin and Munin, are true. Uh, two ravens are indeed associated with Odin, and the raven symbology is quite important within the pre-Christian animistic belief systems of Northern Europe, which is one of the very few symbols uh, I haven't yet made a video of, but I shall, so let's leave it at that for now. Thor's hammer uh, is correct, Mjolnir. Uh, is really Thor's hammer and has a varied iconography. There are several objects, usually pendants, that go back to this idea of the hammer or the axe as a symbol of power and fertility related to the god Thor. Uh, that, archaeologically speaking, of course, according to the evidences of the material culture of the Viking Age, Thor's hammer, in its visual and material representation, seems to have been a response to the Christian cross, precisely in the formation of uh, religious symbols to be demonstrated, socially speaking, in a period of strong religious syncretism in Northern Europe. I also have videos about Thor's hammer and the, the, the god Thor himself. Um, the Troll cross um, is not an authentic Viking Age symbol. The troll cross is a modern folk symbol, usually carved on doors and windows, but always using the Latin cross, the Christian cross. Uh, the contemporary shape shown in the image um, is a 1990s um, creation, so quite late 20th century. Of course, I also made a video about the troll cross and elf cross, by the way. <laughs> Check it out if you can. Uh, I need views and activity on my channel because I really want this to be my only job because I'm fed up with my actual job as an archaeologist and not being paid and having to have two more jobs to support myself. Help me out, please, <laughs> and become my patron if you can. No one is forcing you to do anything. <laughs> Finally, uh, we have the horns of Odin. <laughs> which are correct to a certain extent. Not everybody accepts the idea that this iconography is associated with Odin, uh, as one of the most concrete evidences can be found in the Snodlu stone, a 9th century runestone originally located in Snodlu, in Denmark. In fact, this symbology is a Friskalion made of horns, so this is an older symbology that appears in various European contexts from the pre-Roman Iron Age, especially in Western Europe and throughout the Mediterranean and the, the Atlantic, um, all the way to the north, but uh, here reshaped to form three horns as symbols that may be related to the myth of Odin and the three. Con the, the, the three containers where the famous meat of poetry made from the blood of the deity, Kvasir, is deposited. And this liquid is consumed by Odin. Uh, although in this context a relationship with Odin is not very specific, even though a swastika is represented in the same context, and we know that the swastika was eventually a very important symbol and associated with Odin and his cult in the north. However, here the swastika is presented as a solar symbology engraved in this context during the 9th century over an older symbology of the sun wheel that was engraved in this same rock but at an earlier time in the Bronze Age. However, the triskelion made of horns or forming horns links the set of images to the god Odin, referring as I said to the myth of the myth of poetry, quite possibly. But also, we have from the same period, 9th century, in the context of Gotland's Iron Age, uh, an important vestige having three geometric symbols, the Volknut, Triskelion, and a spiral, and a knight uh, and a, a Valkyrie carrying a horn. So here we also see a Triskelion that seems to be represented by horns, and we are facing a funerary context of the dead knight entering the afterlife, possibly in Valhall, being welcomed by an entity often associated with Odin, and even this afterlife hall, afterlife place, is also associated with Odin as well. Therefore, a knight carries a shield with a spiral, uh, despite having greatly diminished in the iconography of the Viking period, the spiral still occupies a very important position in some monuments of this period. Next, 
uh, to it, uh, we have uh, Volknut, uh, a really important symbol of the Viking Age, very possibly, very possibly influenced by the contact with the Anglo-Saxons. And unfortunately, that symbol, the Volknut, does not appear in this meme. And a uh, Triskelion with horns and in front of him, in front of the knight, a Valkyrie welcoming him. Here, the solar sense is perhaps uh, not so important, but it could be that in, in this case, in this particular case, solar symbolism was transferred to Odin because the context of the scene is totally Odinic, related to the cult of Odin, right? Therefore, the symbols that are wrong here in this meme could very well be replaced by other geometric symbols, such as the Volknut, as I said, the most important pagan symbol of the Viking Age, uh, and the triquetra, the triskelion, the swastika, and the spiral were also important symbols in this period and cultural and historical context. And even though, of course, obviously, they are symbols of other times and previous contexts and cultures, they eventually also played an important role in the symbology and uh, religious iconography of Scandinavia in, and the Baltic in the Iron Age and medieval times. Well, um, that's it and I do hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope it was useful in some way. Please um, share it around so we can put an end once and for all to several misconceptions still circulating on the internet. <laughs> and help me out, please, if you can. <laughs> Tell your friends about this channel, call your grandmother as well. Bring everyone here to the party. Well, um, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, talk for it up. Thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje. Until we meet again, my dear friends.